You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We have some special guests in the building. Now, first and foremost, we have Styles P here. It's P. Yo, yo, yo. From the LOX and also uh, owner of Juices for Life. Yes, yes. sir. And All we also them. have his lovely wife. Azua Styles. Azua Styles in the building. Hello. I was debating about this the other day. Was Styles the first hip hop health junkie? It seemed like it, right? Yeah. It oh, does kind of seem like it. I would say LL, yeah, but, but but Styles had the green juice and all that. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't want to be the first and I don't want to be the last. Mm -hmm. I just want to play the part. And I think that's the one thing, like, in the health field is, is bigger than credit. Like, like I, I owe them a lot of things. What we do, we got to do together is strength in numbers. Like, mm -hmm. so to be the first, to be the last, that kind of puts a damp on what we're trying to do. What it is is for you to take it, own it personally, and spread throughout your family. Like, you know what I mean? So I owe a lot of thanks to my two partners here, too, Yee and Envy, because it's about the message at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, we in, we in weird times now in the community, so, you know, we, we just, we on it. That's all. We've been on it. Because a lot of people was into the fitness, but you introduced the, 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 life, the food change, you doing the vegan stuff, the juices. Yeah, I mean... Definitely so, because I mean, I, I felt this important, especially for the streets. Like, you got We have a voice in hip hop, and when you, you know, you're a credible character in hip hop, whether you rap, produce, make beats, journalist, what, dance, whatever, whatever it is, you have a, you got a voice that people actually will listen to. And I ain't saying go out and be, you know, all picket sign and righteous and all, all right. over extra do it if that's not who you are. But you should take a little time out your day out your week or sometime out your life to push people forward because we're fortunate to have these positions. So it's a lot of people who don't have them and we once we get them, we forget how they were. Absolutely. Now the reason why I wanted Azua up here with with you this morning as your strong wife, yes, I was she thinking is. as I was reading because she actually gave me a sneak peek of her manuscript that she wrote. She has a book. and Lovely book. Yes. Excellent book. And we're going to get yeah. all into that and I really appreciated um, having the opportunity to read it ahead of time. But I felt like I was reading it and I was like, I wonder if Styles, the way that he started eating was because of Ajua because she also did go to culinary school. She grew up actually being, well, supposed to be vegetarian, but sneaking out and eating other things that she wasn't supposed to eat. But how influential <laughs> was she on very, your very, diet very and your heavy? Food like her and the juice bar was my whole turnaround. Her would implement me eating right, like me always being on the road. So it was coming in. You know, I always had, I grew up on home cooked food. She always made home cooked food. Then we start, like, I never knew what but kale we had was. Different versions of clean eating. <laughs> <laughs> we had different versions of clean eating. Yeah, like we had. His, like, my father was a Rasta. Mm -hmm. So that's idle food. That's clean eating all around. Oxtails, rice and beans. No, oh. none of that. No, oh. Rasta. that's not clean eating. Oh. No, oh. I mean, I no Rasta. meat. No meat. No oh, good. no meat. Okay, yeah, okay. No, got you. No, I no, I no, 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 only things from the earth. Yeah, uh, yeah. I never heard of that. Idol Rust. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Idol is vital. So, so I was raised that way, and then I introduced that to him mm -hmm. for the most part. But I mean, he ate healthy, but it was the way most people eat healthy now. The way they consider they consider themselves to eat healthy, and um, you know, it's just. I didn't know what organic meant right. until she broke it down to me. Like I always thought organic was something foreign. Like you know what I mean? Like it was. And she was like, "No, it just doesn't and have more greens than broccoli." You know what, what I mean? mean? And I always greens. thought. Mm -hmm. Right. Collard greens, yeah. spinach, and broccoli. Like, and, it, mm -hmm. and she was like, "Get kale, get." And I was like, "I didn't even know Russell what kale sprouts, was." I was like, you know, "Kale's got to be like spinach's cousin child. or something." Yeah. And you know, it was just a lot of things. Like, it was just, um, and that's why we say it starts at home because often, especially, it, it, it's real big because you know, hip hop is a, a braggadocious bravado sport. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's about jewelry, women, cars, and and you know, as a young man, you you do want to enjoy that if you can. Like, you know, if mm -hmm. that opportunity comes to you, but it comes a, comes a time when you start making kids and you have a family, now you need a foundation. It gets bigger than just what your homeboys think of, of you when you cool or like, you know, I could go out in my homeboys, they could do what they want to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to relax. I'm going to chill. And it's still cool because you just got to stand that firm ground because if I say, if I would want to listen to her and I would have really, you know, Follow the path that everybody else was most likely my son wouldn't need a plant-based diet right now most mm -hmm. likely our household 
a move difference. Most likely as business, we I wouldn't be able to wake up and talk to her like on business things. She wouldn't be able to say, nah, you made a wrong move then. You know, you should think before you do that. So a lot of things have, um, is... Just, it just, it's just, well, it, 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 it works in the household. So once, because honestly, I wasn't a vegan. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, he adapted that, I want to say like maybe four years. Yeah. Four years ago with my son. And I was like, no, I'm not <laughs> doing that. I'm still eating meat, but I'll just like get organic or like, you know, healthy, healthy versions. But that's still, after a while, it was just like. I actually saw the way the diet manifests with him and my son in, in terms of um, weight, um, energy. Mm -hmm. um, attitude sometimes. Attitude, everything, a lot of things. So with that and me monitoring that and observing that, I would just was like, you know what, I can do better. And I actually just went that way as well. Um, I teetered for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> what the balance. That's what the balance yeah, of the whole. I mean, you're human. You know what I mean. And, and you're programmed, and you're you're used to a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just about understanding what's better for you. And then when you actually live the lifestyle, you'll see and feel the difference. And then you don't want to go back. And then you don't want to switch. Right. So that's the incentive. Because it's addictive, like the sugars yeah. and all the hormones yeah. they put in food. And then once you stop eating it then you stop right. craving it kind right of. kind of <laughs> what made, what made you go too? Oh, go it's very difficult to find healthy alternatives absolutely you know? like you know the, the juice bar in brooklyn other than that you know it's it's very difficult like if you look at your certain area especially in the hood growing up in queens i mean it was always a kennedy fried chicken a white yeah. castle some mcdonald's right. liquor store uh, right. uh you know uh uh Jamaica spot to sell beef patties with cocoa bread. I think Jamaica is healthy, man. But, <laughs> I mean, it's a that's healthier. what I keep telling myself. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't. They have, they have, like, they have certain Jamaicans have, yardies yeah. that just like she was saying, like her father grew up just, just eat idle. Nothing that swim, crawl, walks, flies, has a heartbeat. You know what I mean? Right. And ground food, and it is difficult where we come from, but it's it's. It's options and alternatives, like you know what I mean. And we don't look at it like that. The like, reason why you think that is because it's fresh. Yes. Which makes sense mm -hmm. in how we should be eating fresh foods. You know what I mean? Like fresh cooked foods, not canned foods, not processed foods. So that's why you say that. Yeah, if you go to the Caribbean, though. they taking the fish right out the water. <laughs> yeah. For the most yeah. part. Yeah. For the most part. But, you know. But. All right. Now, let's get back into, you actually wrote this book and you yes. dedicated it to your daughter. Yes. And your daughter actually committed suicide. And I remember when yes. Styles put up the post about her and I thought it was so heartbreaking for us. But um, it is an important discussion to have because Absolutely. there's so many people that actually are dealing with depression. They're dealing with people around them. We don't know what's going on in their lives. A lot of people have dealt with people they know who have, you know, mental issues. They've um, made suicide attempts. You said you yourself right. even had made mm -hmm. one around the same age mm -hmm. that she was. So what made you feel like you needed to write this book? Oh, well, several reasons. Well, um, one is to just honor her. Mm -hmm. um, because she was only 20 and be of an inspiration to people I guess that want to have a voice mm -hmm. that have um, maybe thoughts or confusions or misunderstandings about themselves that they just pretty much probably um, keep to themselves as opposed to sharing or you know or just believing that they're human or normal because of the thoughts so um i just think it's important to open a discussion mm -hmm. this is one of my biggest fears yeah. too with my kids yes and i try to stay on top of them because mm -hmm. you never know what they're absolutely. dealing with you know and especially with the social media mm -hmm. area, absolutely. and especially with you know a lot of times with us making more money right. than than we did as, as parents, like in my right. in my kids, I lived in I lived in Queens, so I, I right. see people like me all all the time. Right. Before our kids, who have a little bit better than we did, or even a lot better than we did, they experience a lot different. Absolutely. You know, they don't really like my kids. They go into white school, so it's it's a lot more difficult for them, and and that's my biggest fear to just. Try to understand them more and it's see what very, they're going through and difficult. make sure they're and okay. That's they'll very tell hard. you to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. much as you think that they're telling you everything and you feel like you know everything, you don't know everything. Because you and Ty you know were I mean? extremely close. We were extremely close. I mean, I had her at um, on the brink of 19. And when she committed suicide, she was living on her own. So she wasn't with me. And I know, like, I feel within my heart, like, if I was around, I'm like her safe haven. Like, she definitely, well, she reached out anyway. 
but I wasn't there. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I couldn't help her. But um, again, it's like she wasn't home. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like knowing that she wasn't home, what was going on? What were you experiencing? What were you thinking about right. at that time? You know? You don't know. I'll so, never so get what, those answers. What, what but... happened? What, why was she depressed? Did y'all ever find well, out? I don't, or, you know? I don't actually... Well, when I... Okay, well, you're saying she's depressed. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I think well, Angelique said maybe she was depressed. Well, so, no, no, no. So it's why? okay. It's okay. No. Mm-hmm. What I'm thinking is, and what my assessments are, is that day, maybe that week, she was perhaps depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that her suicide was a culmination of a lot of things. It was her missing home, mm-hmm. her um, trying to be an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, she was also uh, bisexual, mm-hmm. so there was some just some confusional confusion issues with her. With that, um, she was also struggling with her biological father's absentee, which was a major thing in her life. Right, and I just think she felt very alone. She was going through a she breakup. She was going through a lot. She was going mm-hmm. through a breakup at that time with her girlfriend. So it was just a culmination of all the emotions at that time, and I think it was just. Um, you know, it wasn't thought out, obviously, and it was just something that just Like happened. some, you know, you know. With, with suicide, we often, and this is what we, as a couple, discuss in his parents. Like, people after, often ask, was she depressed? Like, like some, we, if we knew she was depressed, she would have been home, you right. know, or with us. Like, some right. things you can't see because some people won't tell you or you won't right. ever get to know. So we all deal with depression on some sort of level or some sort of issue, so... Mm-hmm. But with suicide, it's often like the person's depressed. I've been at moments, well, not not suicidal. I, I've been at moments where I've been homicidal. Mm. Not saying I've killed anyone, so but there's, you just killed but there's been anybody. moments where I would have killed a person. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're if you're it would like, have, so. like, so we don't, mm-hmm. with suicide, it's always that person's depressed. But there's there's a lot of activities in our life. Like, you have, you have people that are suicidal. You have people that are homicidal. You have beautiful young women right now that's on the internet butt naked, mm-hmm. beautiful, and have mm-hmm. no reason to be, like, then you have other beautiful women who go out and use their bodies in ways that they shouldn't. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just, just a young lady just go ran out. So we don't know what causes these people to do these things. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to say, for for us particularly, it's hard to say what, what mental health is or what, mm-hmm. I suffer from mental health every day, I believe. Right. I, I You know, we got to wake up every day with a, a daughter that's not with us, mm-hmm. you know, I said that all the And the time black about man, I'm black. PTSD. On top of that, PTSD. on like top of that, I'm black. Right. You know right. what I mean? Or, or, so you watch what happened in Charlottesville, and that's oh right. man, exactly. You know what I mean? So I think it's hard to, it's you know, as far as mental health for us, particularly, it's hard to describe that for mm-hmm. for anyone. Mm-hmm. We believe it's just about cleaning your body out as much as you possibly can. Checking on people, well, checking on your loved Same ones, you. balance, and mm-hmm. really asking what's up. Like we 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 see each other all the time, and um, this was actually like, and these are things you have, and and uh, things. <clears throat> this is what what marriage. Go ahead. No, I was just another thing. Like in terms of her being, this is another thing that we discussed as parents. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of her being bisexual, we kind of, how should I say, kind of casually looked at her relationship, meaning because there were two females. Well, this particular race relationship was two females. We didn't think of it as intimidating or yeah. threatening or harmful. You know what I mean? Because they're two females. I right. mean, just is just I'm just being honest. I get what you know what like I mean? Yeah. So you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean? Yeah. so mm-hmm. when 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 they're having an altercation, I'm not thinking it's as serious. And this is just me being ignorant. You right. know what I mean? I, I'm not thinking it's just that 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 serious or that detrimental for her. Uh, maybe because it, I'm thinking there's more sensitivity right. in that situation. Yeah. But um, it's actually not. It's actually a real relationship where, where there are two partners with two significant roles. And when you understand that, it's the same feelings whether they're heterosexual or bisexual right. or whatever, you know. Yeah. So when we understood that, it was kind of like, wow, I didn't take it as serious mm-hmm. as I probably should have, you know. But... That's just with not understanding that kind of lifestyle, which I don't. Right. You know what I mean. So, and I, I mean, love I how you you expressed that learning. in the book, and you said yeah. there was an aha moment for you. Yeah. When she explained to you, talk about that. When she told you, you know, at first you were like, "Oh man, it's going to be so much harder for you." This stigma that comes right. with it. But then she said something to you. You guys had a conversation. Yeah. Well, basically, I. 
Well, I'll be honest. That was just one of my biggest fears because, you know, nowadays it's just like it seems to me that homosexuality has just become a trend. So mm-hmm. um, I didn't want her to follow that trend. And it, it was seemed like, you know, I drew her to it. Well, whatever. Maybe I didn't. It was just natural. Whatever the case is, is that when she came to me and told me that, you know, she was bisexual, I was just like, you know, like, what do you mean? Like, wh- like, where did you come up with this? Like, how did you, whatever, whatever. And she was basically said in like one sentence to me, I just love people. Like, I love people that love me. You know, like if we have good chemistry and we love each other and we have a good energy about each other, I just like being around them. And with that, it was very easy to understand Simple. because I'm like that, you know what I mean? But not necessarily attracted to females, mm-hmm. but energy I am, you right. know, so. Was the book therapeutic for you in a way? Very, and cathartic, mm-hmm. very, very. Yeah, it was, I I kind of feel like I needed to do that mm-hmm. or else um, I don't know where I'd be. <laughs> but um, it was, it was very, very uh, needed. Did you feel like suicidal one of those... after? Did you feel oh, suicidal? Oh, absolutely no. No? Oh, well, actually one, like, it was very short. One, it was like, We went down to Florida because that's where the um, incident took place. And I remember being in the back seat of my mother's car and he was in the front seat. And uh, she was driving on the highway and a song, her favorite song came on. Mm -hmm. And I just like kind of lost it. And I remember they didn't know, but I kind of like opened the back seat of the car, like the door. But my mom had the child lock on. I don't know why, because the kids are like over 20. And um, she had it on. So it wasn't that was that. But yeah. But after that, no, no, that was mm. just like, okay, I guess that's not where I'm going and that's not what he wants me to do. So I just, that was that. Cause it seems like mm. one of those things that you never quite understand. Right, mm. right. Not at all. No. Not at all. It- but I mean, you get some kind of, you can't never get the exact answer, but one we know, you know, the absentee father thing was a big thing. Her being young, you know what I mean? And trying to handle life on her own. Us as parents, you don't get a textbook on when your child is gay, especially when you're from the mm-hmm. the hood. So it's kind of like we was... Or if you're not. You know, you know what I mean? So he's... And like... Because if it was a boyfriend, you know what I mean? I definitely would have been... More on top. Oh, more on top. Right. But it's like right. a girl, what am I going to... I don't even know how to check a... Well, I'd say to her, like, you know what I mean? Like, what are, like, you what are, I'm a fuck you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, part yeah. of my yeah, friends, I'm going to put hands on you. Yeah. You, you know, you can't threaten her. to do nothing. To, but, like, yeah. not even a man to man, like, on, you know what I mean? Right. So it's like, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it was kind of just, it was weird. But I think but we, we were had, still learning. We were learning know? and we were adapting. So as we were going, like, you know, she made it, she made it clear to us. She, and, you know, we just looked at it like, hey, we, you know, roll with the punches. Yeah, as I said, you were very cool with it like as soon as yeah he was he was yeah because yeah for years you know it was it was you see a lot of the youth going like young males young females all of that and um if you gay that's your choice i have no problems with no homosexuals or or whatever but i think the culture is pushed on the children a lot Mm -hmm. like you know what i mean before they're ready to see it Mm -hmm. before a mind could grasp it like you know, when we when we came up, we we came up a little slower. Mm-hmm. wasn't as much technology, so it kind of was grad. You gradualed as you grew. Like some people were fast, and some people, you know, some people didn't have sex today. It was in high school, late high school, some college, some you know. But now all these kids is in their face all the time. Male sex, female sex, mm-hmm. transgender sex, animal sex. You go on the net, it's just all sex all the time, and these uh-huh. kids don't. Before your mind could really grasp what you're doing, what you're seeing, they they, they they have a platter That's of real. everything. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Before I, they could even really grow into saying, be developed hmm, as far as yeah. be developed. Yeah. Their, their whole body is not even developed. Her, you know what I mean? And so their mind's taken in too much. So you know, we I, I feared that, but from from speaking to her and gathering and just knowing my daughter, knowing her personality. I kind of understood her, and it was, it was, it was, you know, it was an understandable thing. But then it made it weird because having a daughter now, you got to have the same conversation with your son, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't right. like, all right, our daughter's gay, this or that. All right, we know our son's not gay, but hope, you know, let's have a conversation. And that's even weird because our son was like, he was whoa, very offended. he was super offended. So it was like, 
Now it's the thing, because our son was like, wait, because she's gay, now I got to be gay. and it, like, right. So it was a weird thing. Like you, The whole process right. of the whole thing was just like new textbooks. To, like You know what I'm saying? Like whole, But we, we figured it out. We worked with it. But it's something you'll never get over because you can't, you not your child is not there, Absolutely. and you, you expect the you expect the you know your child to bury you, not not you bury your child. Absolutely, I'm glad but, you spoke about it though. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, we got to because you know as a father, when I heard about it, you know that's a question that you want to ask. You know what I mean? Because like I always say in our community, we never speak much. Yeah. So like, if if there's something going on with me, I never say, all right, well let me ask my brother what's going on or my neighbor. So mm -hmm. as a father, when I heard it, I was like, damn, I wanted to know why, how, how can I prevent? Am I missing something? So I'm glad you guys well, are really talking about what it. What I will say about this is I have no regrets. Mm. I have made it my business for maybe the last maybe four or five years mm -hmm. well, because I was forced to with the way this world is. Just try to understand her a little better and understand that she's more like me right. than um than anything else and with that understanding it allowed me to have a little bit more sensitivity and um more of just allowing her to be herself and make her own mistakes more and, and less judgment so with that we we got closer and we had a really good relationship so we we i'm just really glad that it ended on a note where her and i were at a really good really good place mm -hmm. so in terms of Preventing it, you can't really prevent it, mm -hmm. but you can be as close to your kid as possible. Absolutely. That way, God forbid anything should happen, you can say to yourself, you know you've turned over every rock, you've done everything right. possible that you've needed to do, which I know I have. Anybody that knows me knows that I have. Mm -hmm. So I'm with that, it's kind of like, I guess that was her path, and I know like I've done absolutely everything, so... You can only give your kid a thousand percent love, which is another thing I put in the book because there's chapters on mental health and and uh, on love and unconditional love and support. Because as a parent, I think that that is the ultimate gift. Right. You know what I mean? That's the ultimate gift you can give your kid is unconditional love through everything. And that's what I've done. So. And you also stress the fact yes. that even if you aren't together with the other parent, you call your um, her father BS. Yes. As in before styles, yes. not as in BS necessarily, <laughs> right? <laughs> or maybe it's a double entendre. Right. I don't know. But um, you know, just the fact that he was an absentee father, and you sometimes you don't realize what kind of effect that can have right. on a Absolutely. child. Absolutely. Well, especially in the days of uh, social media, where you know you're literally absent from her life, but she can go on social media and see you with your other children Damn. and your other wife Damn. functioning. That. That's that that plays on her emotional, uh, you, her emotional. Absolutely, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like that's something that now I have to clean up, and now I have to try to fix, or I have to try to understand, because he's still in the household, and he's been in the household ever since she was one. So she's pretty much only known him. She's only known him. We've been together for twenty two years, so she's only known him. But she still had that longing and that need and that want, and plus she was, you know, um, she was, you know, involved with the family for a certain amount of years, but. As she got older, that kind of just went to the wayside, and then there was just no contact at all. But you know, she she would act out in terms of um, wanting a father, and mm -hmm. I a, a biological her biological right. father, and I would reach out, and then it would be it would be so inconsistent that that would actually be worse than actually him not being around at all. Right, for so, him to come in and out. Yeah, so at, at this he was point, forced, he felt forced to do it, and he yeah, and she could so tell. Yeah, so at this right. point, it was just like you know what. Let him do his thing. Let her do her thing. So he completely faded out. And when he faded out, that was when she realized she was older now. I'm out of the picture. I can't help any longer. She. This is something she's probably going to have to deal with on her own. And um, you know, that's it, it, it. That's something that you can never fix. I feel as if you, I. I don't know because I've never had that. My father's always been in my life. Mm -hmm. But from what I've heard, that can manifest in so many ways. In, in as a woman, and as you get older. I don't believe it gets better when that, you have an absentee did, father. Did that eat you up, Styles? That you could never, like, you couldn't fill that void of being like the biological father. Yeah, but I understood because I had a stepfather also. Mm -hmm. But um, my daughter always gave me the utmost praise. Like it hurt a lot because even a few few weeks before, mm -hmm. I, well, 
uh, was week, it Father Father's Day? Was the week before? Yeah, she, I mean, me and my daughter were very close. Like, you know what I'm saying? To a point, it it, it didn't it didn't eat me up because I, it ate me up because I couldn't stop the pain, mm -hmm. you know. But um, it's just weird because I don't hold anything against him now neither because I used to be very upset with him. I understand that's a lapse in his judgment, training, um. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Um. It's okay. We completely. We get it, my brother. Yeah, we understand. Um, it's difficult as a as a black man coming from a uh, if you had step parents or step pops or you your father was out your household or something, you'd know the pain. And I think we is, it's just a hurtful thing all around because we come up in households where we don't really pay attention to family issues. Like, we, we so much on the hustle and trying to get the money that family becomes second and money becomes first. But, um, so to see her grow up without that, you know, and, um, and be times I used to try to reach out to him. You know, we, we it was times it was, it was times it was okay. It was sometimes mm -hmm. he was okay. Then, it, like she said, it just laps out and do the thing. So I'd be like, yo. I remember one time me asking him earlier, like, I say, yo, you really don't even know me. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, your daughter, she's a beautiful girl. I've been raising her for years. What if I was a pedophile? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't even, you don't really know. Like, what right. if, like, I, I just asked him that one day. Like, that should, that should concern you. Like, it's a beautiful kid. Like, anything, any, like, you know what I mean? So I kind of understand it's so much lapse in the, in the in the hood alone of black fathers and black men. Or we have children early with people we shouldn't have children with, and then we just think it was the wrong person, so you step off, and then the child's for dead. Right. And it's it's a sad thing because it's all over, and then you got a lot of dudes who think, let me just bust this nut, get this, the kid, I ain't really love the chick, let me do. That's uncool because then you got a bunch of pain sitting somewhere. Like you got a frustrated child. Everybody wants to have a biological connection. I grew up, um, I knew my father. My father was in my life for years. I had a stepfather. My father couldn't provide for me and do certain things, but he always gave me the utmost love. You know what I mean? But there was times I was like, damn, I wish I lived with my father. Even when my step pops was cool and things, but you just want a biological connection sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when a, when a person doesn't have that connection, especially a child, it's fragile to them. So every other part of their life becomes, if something's fragile, it becomes kind of You're looking for stability. destructive yeah. before it becomes stable. So it's kind of a, a hard thing to deal with, you know? How was her father when, when, when he found out? We've never I, even I, I seen him or spoke to him, to be honest with you. Funeral or nothing? No, I, yeah, no. like, well, I don't want to make him look bad no. or say nothing bad about him, actually, and because I mean, right. we're not going to do that do because... That. Right. Okay, you were very conscious. That's that's yeah. that's on him. And God bless him, like, you know, because mm -hmm. he did make her. He made a beautiful, he made a beautiful child. And, pers and that's something he got to live with. All of us got to live with our own dirt at the end of the day, whether right. it's good or bad. He could have had his reasons. I can't say whether they're justifiable or not. That's not on, that's not my call, but right. it is. Yeah, but it is it is painful, but call. yeah, you like, could have, but you didn't. So it is, is a lot that no, could be done, really but it's not always true. done. Indeed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you just, I just try to move on and keep a name, <clears throat> living in a good memory, because I don't want to have any Absolutely. negative. Feelings. And that's what we do. And y'all called him and when told him that she passed and everything. So he didn't know. It wasn't like he did not know. Oh, no. Oh. He absolutely. To be honest with you, I'm not sure how or who got in contact with him at this point. Well, someone said he did come to the funeral, but then he left. Or some, I don't know. I just didn't even really want to entertain it. Right. And well, you don't want to have negative any, feelings. We, we never heard anything um, at this point. It's neither here nor there. But um, obviously he was contacted, you know, um, because the family members were there. Okay. You know, so... There's no way he had no idea. You know idea. what I mean? Like gotcha. that that's no. And besides it, that connection, it's also important to know about the father because of any type of history of Absolutely. As Mental you said. illness. Yeah. yeah, because if you if you mm -hmm. when you just have, you know, random partners and you have children, you you have no history, um, family history, no background history in terms of anything, uh, mental history, 
uh, strokes to heart attacks. You have yeah. no idea of anything, so you really should know what you're getting into. Minister or- Farrakhan talks about that all the time. He talks about the science of breeding. He says sometimes yeah. it's like you you rolling dice in the back of a moving yeah. pickup truck. Absolutely, and and that's literally what it is—a crapshoot sometimes because you don't know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. You know, so and then you're then you're upset at the result. <laughs> you know? It just sucks as a parent. Like so, I feel for any all parent when you wake up. Because you expect the, your child to bury you. Right. Absolutely. So for us, we wake up every day and it's, you got to push forward. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it gets rough sometimes. Like, because, so you got to really check on everybody. Not just your kids, though. Your, your homies, too. Like, you say, mm-hmm. like, you, I feel like crap, but that don't mean I'm going to go to the studio with it. I'm going to light up, right, take right. a drink before, I'm going to shake it off because you don't want to pass that energy. But if I kept, if I feel like that and nobody ever goes, yo, how you feeling? I'm going, yo, how you feeling today? You all right? Like, Mm-hmm. We don't do that to each other right. enough as brothers. Like, yo, you you eating all right? You thinking all right? Like, you, you know, you but like, again, that's until it's a bad situation. That allows you to think and, that way. Right. That's you what we got to do so. beforehand. Like she says, the diet. Because sometimes, you know, you, it's like, it's not cool. Everybody don't want to seem like too soft. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, if I'm too caring, if I'm too peaceful, I'm too... Say eat plants to to this. You too loving. You soft. That doesn't make you soft. Like, and that's what a big. That's what we misconstrued in the hood. And that's why I try to tell dudes all the time. It's survival out here. Like you trying to survive. You watching Absolutely. the news. You see what's happening. So some coming to your city, they blow up. Or if a, if a, like think about it in this sense. Right now, if what happened in Charlottesville happened right now in your town in your city, mm-hmm. how fit are you? Like really, how well, fit well, are you? How many up. miles can you walk? Can you jog? Around the block, can you can you put your hands up for over a couple minutes? Or you if like two minutes is a long time to fight. Long and, time. and thirty seconds is a long Burn time up. to fight in real life if you're not trained. <laughs> yeah, it's a yeah, very true. long time. Burn so we often get this bravado sense I could knock something out, but how fit are you? Can you walk with your family a certain amount of miles? But like, also you know? it's also in the sense of like it's look at it like this. Aside from <laughs> taxes and bills and everything else crazy that we have to deal with. Like for me, example, we're already in the negative losing a child. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at it. You know what I mean? Like there's, we're already quote unquote at the bottom. Like there's nothing else that could be worse for me. You know, so with that, I can only do everything to boost my morale, my emotion, my spirits, to be as positive as I possibly could be. And I truly believe diet helps me with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if I wasn't consistent with that and I had erratic thoughts and I had, um, um, you know, just I wasn't in control or balance to, to a degree, then I, I believe like I wouldn't be successful at being, you know, positive and putting forth that that lane that I'm trying to stay in <laughs> because it's very hard losing yeah. a child. It's very difficult, especially when you, you know, like him, you have all your beautiful children and I see you with your kids and they're beautiful mm-hmm. and that's amazing and, you know, and it's great, but it's also a reflection of my life too mm-hmm. when I see what I'm missing sometimes, but it's not that I'm actually missing. I I just know, like, I'm used to my, um, my squad, so right. to speak, you know what I mean? And I know, like, it's just like, it's a new normal for me, so to speak, of understanding my new space that I'm in. So I'm still adjusting. I think that but was the first getting, thing I did, though, like what you said. But it's getting better. Think of family first. Cause I, you're so used to hustling and grinding and got to make bread. And I think five years ago, I was like, Fuck the money. It's all about my family. Now yeah. I put my family first. I, like, it's if I can't bring my kids to something, right. I ain't going to. Like, people exactly. be, and, and that's what a good partner in marriage is about. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, like, like marriage is not no, no cakewalk, no cup of tea. Not at all. Like, we don't always get along. We don't always agree. Our positive and good times just outweigh the bad times. Right. But it's times like, I, I, I sell juice for a living. I sell fruit. I make music. I try to spread knowledge. But sometimes she'd be like, you got to slow down. We need right. a family day or you got to pay Absolutely. attention. You like you chasing this money. That's important. And I'd be like, because we, we we have the same values, but that don't mean it's always on the same same exact scale. People right. always think that. Like you and your significant other are not going to always think the same thing. And I'm like, man, I'm going to make sure I pay all of this, all of this thing. She's like, that's cool. But we lost a child. You, we lost this. We lost this friend. We lost that friend, that family member. That money can't bring them back. Right. Appreciate these times. Let's roll. Then figure out a way together to get the money. Or, all right, you go do that. Then we, you know, it's about balance. Just like checks and balance. All right, go get the money. 
Go take three days in the lab. Go four days in the lab. Do what you've got to do. But fifth day, sixth day, we're going to eat. We're going to watch the movie with our kid. We're going to do this and that. So it's kind of the balance. It's like a checks and balances. Because people often ask, like, how do you make it work? Because it's two of us, but we're looking at it like it's one of us. At the end, we make mistakes. We have flaws. We have differences. We, you know, we grow together. But we're trying to build some to it's spread to spread to spread something else. Because we're in this. Like, people, it's, it's hard to say, especially when you're a gangster and you're a rapper and you're cool and you're hip-hop, but we in a fucked up world today. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And if we don't start looking at serious matters, like, it's, it's cool. Like, I ain't saying don't get on Twitter, don't get on Instagram, don't joke, don't laugh, don't have fun, because you got to. That's the balance. But some days, like, I look at my timeline, like, the past few days, I'm like, some of these dudes are still, like, joking a lot and not taking it serious until it happens to them. Like, even, like... I'm not being funny, but like white people, it's, it's, it's a lot of y'all have to take responsibility for being white now. Like, absolutely, it's like it's a lot of, of views. Like, you have to really say, as a white man, how do I view myself as an American and as a human being? Like, mm-hmm. they, they, they got to you know use their, I mean? they got to use their privilege to combat absolutely. prejudice. Yeah, definitely. White supremacy is a mess voice. they created. Absolutely. They got to clean it up. Absolutely, mm-hmm. definitely. So, like, we even feel like, and even like that, like, there's a lot of white people that sleep right now. They don't even know, you not even cared about by the rich white man. Word up. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you look what they're giving your kids in school, look what you're going to buy from the supermarket, look what you're eating. Right. You as a middle class, all y'all people who came out from all them hick towns and all that, go watch what the hell, see what you feeding your kid. Mm-hmm. Think about how much the white man really loves you. Word up. You're a white man because they always paint, as we came up in our whole life, black on black crime, yeah. black on black crime, black on, the white on all crime. <laughs> Take responsibility for white on every white on white, white on black, white on brown, white on yep. like you gotta you and and we as brown people and all over the world gotta say nah white man take your responsibility for what you doing like this one for one this ain't your land you stole it from the Indians then you kidnap black people or Asian people and we built it so how is it your land like how you can't steal somebody bring them somewhere and then want them to get out when the work's done this ain't even yours like. Just relax, eat plants, and we all like <laughs> eat plants, juice up, mm-hmm. realize what's going on, take a real look in the mirror. Yeah, but they want to feel and you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of good white people right now too. that I see saying a lot of good things. And that they have I have to keep doing that. I didn't expect. So I really mm-hmm. respect that. I love it, but. We need more. We good need white more. people got to denounce these white devils. Yeah. Good white people got to denounce these yes. crack ass crackers. Like, yeah. That's what it boils down to. That's what it gets down to at the end of the day, but a lot of them don't know. You got that beast mentality, like that hate mentality is coming from somewhere. That's rooted, that's rooted somewhere deep. You got to get to the bottom of that. Nurture yourself. Start get them toxins out, cause it's more than just that's re- that's all toxins. Right. That's more than just food toxins, cause them toxins come from the food toxins settling in you. Like you got to start to think about it. And y'all y'all call yourselves radical Christians or whatever they, you know they're supposed to be Christians. It says in your Bible, in your Bible, white man. Your Bible, it says Jesus was bronze with woolly hair. Yep. Would you have killed Jesus? Because he looked like us. Well, they did kill and Jesus. And they did, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, right now, would you? Well, you yeah. know what I mean? Right. Since you're saying what you do, I'm saying right. today, would you outright and go kill him? Most likely, yeah. So I think we just had a good time where, we, as men, we need to say, all right, let's try to be healthy. Because all the healthy people are going to gather up, get in harmony, you know, harmony, and then... We gotta, we gotta get this world clean and put it on the right track and make people take responsibility for this shit. Well, we appreciate you guys. For oh, I wanted to ask one more thing. I didn't, I didn't want to stay on the death thing, but how, how did the, okay. the death of the brother Ice Pick affect you? That hurt oh, bad. Yeah. That was very I, sad. Ice, Ice Pick crushed us. You know, because um, every death crushes, but you know, we find a way to smile because we understand this is the physical. You know, energy never dies. Energy will never but again, die. again, that was someone we had a really good relationship you with. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So. And um, Pick was a, he was a founder, a pillar in, in the LOXD Block Foundation. You know what I mean? He's a, um, he's like a captain of the team, practically. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but that's another thing. Like health, our health means a lot. And we we often take this for granted in our community and with our homeboys. And a lot of us, if you was, you know, born in the 70s and the 80s, you, you get in your... Your, your upper 30s, your 40s, you you somewhere there, and you're still hanging in the clubs and with the young fellas. You're still dressing young. You're looking good, but your body's not the same, mm. and you really have to take care of it. And you gotta, you know, I'm not I'm not a, a I'm not a dude who's big on um going to the doctor and all of that and in modern medicine. So it forces me to say I gotta take care of myself as much as possible. 
And if I do have to go that route, then let me try to find a holistic, find out what's wrong with me, and find out holistic ways to combat it too. But we we not we ain't we doing good with everything, but except really taking care of ourselves and talking about it. Like I think we all grew up in this room on a hip hop that was full of knowledge, mm -hmm. full of right. self pride, full of building us up, full of you know it was balanced. Now it's like if you ain't popping and you ain't perking. the hottest perking, mm -hmm. you know, leaning making it rain it ain't it ain't hip but i'm telling you survival is hip don't be don't be a fool and don't sleep Hello. survive and Azra, right. what yes. about this book what's happening with the book because i do want other people to be able to read it and you know even just there's great things in there about you and styles getting together uh -huh. you know at a young age and staying yes. together all this time mm -hmm. and also about your come up even before styles mm -hmm. just certain things that you used to do growing up i didn't know you was born in brooklyn yes <laughs> oh no, no, no! I'm born in Manhattan. Oh, born in Manhattan, raised, but raised, raised in Brooklyn. Yes, right, forever. raised in Brooklyn. Yes, and so there's a lot that goes on that uh, really kind of paints a picture of right. what your life was mm -hmm. like, and just kind of being with Styles, and then having your son, right. and raising your daughter right. together, and all of that. But I do think it's an important conversation just for everybody to talk about their mental health and to talk about the people around them and how to take yes. care of ourselves and each other. So, absolutely, what's going to happen with this book? Well, it should be coming out. Um, Hmm. Well, Same process or what's no, going well, on? it's finished, but <laughs> yeah, she, it was it was a nice book, and we just found a, a, a few different. Um, she she hustled and found a out, couple outlets, and then you know I hustled and found a couple outlets, and we just okay. filling out all the outlets, and then the um, best outlet of will what? putting out the book. That's your preview right here. So we we'll also finish. got no, um, no, it's, it's you. Yeah. Why don't y'all two tell them what y'all got working on? It's too early. <laughs> well, well, as far as the book. Um, it will be out. Um, it's definitely needed. It's a, it's a big message of unconditional love and um, mental health, families, little little bio uh, mm -hmm. of myself and my daughter. Um, but it's just some good inspiration, and it's just really good to get some insight to a potential situation that right. can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited right. about it, and I'm glad to honor her as well. So, well, good. Thank you, I, and I really do appreciate yeah. you guys coming. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. With us, it's Thank very you. important. Thank y'all yeah. very much. It's Thank the you. Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank okay. you guys.